Hi everybody, Joey here again and welcome back. So in today's video, I'm going to show you how to build an aquarium water sterilizer. For the past few years, many of you have been asking me for my take on a do-it-yourself version of the Twin Star aquarium water sterilizer. I've actually been avoiding that project for a number of reasons. One, the company's actually pretty elusive as to how it actually works and what it's actually doing. Second, I've never actually owned one, which means I've never seen them in action personally or had the opportunity to kind of take them apart and see what's working inside. With that said, with some very minimal research, I quickly realized that they're using electrolysis to sterilize the water. Now, electrolytics is a way to sterilize water and it's been around for over a hundred years. So knowing what it's doing is the first step to me being able to replicate it. Before I get started, I simply want to state that this is just my version of what I think the Twin Star is. With that said, I did get it to work. It does look exactly like the Twin Star, and I did put it through some tests, and I'll share that at the end. After I took a look at some photos of the Twin Star and seen it in action on video, I realized I could easily replicate what's going on there. I needed to start off with what's on the inside of the tank. It looks like a small disc and a couple pieces of steel mesh on the inside. After a few short minutes walking around the hardware store, I realized that I could just use a two inch coupling for the disc. And then I lucked out and found some stainless steel mesh. That's actually meant as a funnel screen. If you've never seen a funnel screen, basically they just go inside of your funnel so that you can strain out any solid particles when you're pouring any liquid into whatever else. However, there's all types of stainless steel mesh out there and it's pretty cheap to find. You can cut it to size. I lucked out and found some 2 inch funnel screen that would fit inside my 2 inch ABS coupling. The 2 inch ABS coupling is a little too wide though so I cut off both of the ends leaving about an inch of width. I then drilled some holes in the sides of the coupling, one being slightly bigger than the other. The big one is going to house the end of a suction cup because this is going to be sucked to the side of a tank eventually. The other hole is only big enough to fit wires through and this is going to be our power source. I then grabbed a few feet of old speaker wire. I stripped the wire and attached one wire to one piece of the mesh and another wire to the other piece of the mesh. And then cemented them in place with my Bondic pen, which I showed you guys in another video how that works. Then each mesh is pressed into the coupling. The key here is to ensure that they get close but do not touch. Now we're almost done. We just have to attach this to a power source. Now because you only turn this on every once in a while, I wanted the cheapest way possible to do this. And since summer's right around the corner, I went and got one of these cheap lanterns for five bucks. They were on sale. The reason it's so cheap is it's just cheap plastic and it has a cheap six volt battery inside. But it's that six volt battery that I'm after. This will be our power source. So total cost as is right now is five dollars for the battery, a dollar for the coupling, and a dollar for each mesh. The suction cup and wire I already had on hand. So I'm about $8 into this, which isn't bad because I think the Twin Star costs like 150 bucks or something like that. Now we place the disc inside the aquarium and attach the wires to the negative terminal on the battery first and then the positive terminal. Now, as soon as you attach this to the positive terminal, watch what happens. We're now creating electrolysis. The tiny micro bubbles that you see is actually oxygen and hydrogen, which is what water is made out of. We're now slowly sterilizing the water. Now this isn't something that you leave on all of the time. Typically you turn it on for an hour and then shut it off. However often you need to turn this on will depend on the conditions of your aquarium and the results that you get. But after an hour you simply unplug the positive terminal and that's it. Then reconnect as you need it. Now I did try this on my own aquariums and it was entirely harmless to my fish as I knew it would be. With that said, I noticed zero differences in my water clarity. Although I must say that I don't have any algae issues or bacterial issues, so any testing on my part was pretty pointless. I should also note that I'm not interested in this type of water sterilization due to its efficiency. It's really only gonna work on smaller aquariums and it's almost impossible to ensure all of the water has been treated. So I'm not going to use this project on my personal aquariums, but it certainly was a fun build to do. For less than 10 bucks, you can go ahead and experiment with it on your own and see what it can do for your aquarium. Personally, for me, if I were going to use a sterilizer for my aquarium, I would definitely use ultraviolet sterilization. In my opinion, far more effective and efficient and you can ensure that your entire water volume is treated on a continuous basis. But I guess I just like to keep things simple. 
So I do want to thank you guys for project suggestions like this one, and even though I can't get to them all, I certainly do take them seriously and build them as I can. Anyways, I hope that you guys enjoyed today's video. I also want to thank you for watching, and I'll see you guys next Sunday for a new do-it-yourself project. <sighs> Look at this. I'm sitting out here with a space heater, heating me up, staring at my sweater, dying to put it back on. It is warm out during the days recently, but it is freezing at nighttime. Glad to be done.